Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to the first lesson in technical drawing for grade 12. Before we start our very first lesson, let's briefly visit the lesson you are going to learn in the technical drawing for grade 12 television program. First, we start with a lesson on principle and techniques of technical sketching. Then, we practice to sketch lines, areas, angles, circles, and arcs. After that, we start to sketch multi-view and pictorial drawings. Later, we study the auxiliary views and projection of points, lines, and planes along with method of constructions. The primary and secondary auxiliary views are followed by the third unit, sectional views. Consequently, we will learn about different types of sections and the conventional practice in sectioning. Then, we will skip to the next unit, dimensioning. In this chapter, we will see the theory, methods, and placement of dimensioning. Finally, we will see the principles of development and intersection of solids. I am sure we will get along very well. In today's lesson, we describe the use and application of freehand sketching and identify freehand sketching materials and learn how to use them properly. Freehand sketching for technical drawing students is sometimes called technical sketching. Freehand sketching is made using only drawing materials like pencils or paint, paper and eraser without the help of drawing instruments. Students, have you ever sketched before? Of course you have. Do you remember some of the activities in your technical drawing for grade 11 television programs? You were supposed to give the solutions in a freehand sketching. Do you know why? Because they save a great deal of time than in instrumental drawings. Freehand sketching quickly translates the image of the concept in the mind's eye to paper. Let us see some examples of rough technical skates. An architect puts his raw ideas of his building design using a sketch first, while engineers put their fresh ideas of mechanical elements using freehand sketch. Freehand sketching also works for interior designers, fashion designers, urban designers, landscape designers, etc. Site or field analysis is sketched to gather information about a particular site. A designer conveys his ideas to his drafter easily. To produce a multi-view drawing, we need to study the layouts using a freehand sketch first. But it seems that freehand sketching has more benefits than time saving over an instrumental drawing. Students, I want you to discuss in order to compare and contrast the freehand sketching with the instrumental drawing. List down the advantages of freehand sketching over the instrumental drawing.
Good. Since the basic idea of technical drawing is communicating whether it's freehand or an instrumental, the simpler way is the better accepted one. Freehand sketching is the process of a rough preliminary drawing, whereas instrumental drawing is the process of producing final drawing. Freehand sketching is the first stage of a design process while instrumental drawing is the final stage of a design process. Freehand sketching doesn't need drawing instruments. Sketches can be refined and detailed easily to upgrade and add new ideas. Instrumental drawings are used in purpose of presentation or production. Freehand sketching takes much less time relatively to the instrumental drawings, etc. Technical sketching can be classified into three. The first one is sketch which communicate technical data such as charts, graphs, maps, and diagrams. The second one is a sketches which illustrates two-dimensional view of an object. And the third one is sketches which illustrates a three-dimensional representation of the object. Students, I want you to sketch back the following sketches using your drawing materials. This is just a minor check of your status in freehand sketching. Teacher, please assist the students to draw their lines freely.
Technical sketching often used by most of the professionals simply because all that is needed for a freehand sketch is a pencil, a paper and an eraser. Pencils with medium grades are recommended for sketching purpose. These are F, H and 2H. Pencils for a freehand sketch are usually sharpened on a piece of sandpaper or a file. By varying the sharpness of the pencil, we could achieve different kinds of lines and strokes. When sharpening a pencil with rounded point, we could achieve heavy lines. These lines are used for visible edges of an object. When sharpening a pencil with a slightly rounded point, we could achieve medium lines. These type of lines are usually used for hidden lines for a hidden feature of the object. When sharpening a pencil with a sharp point but not as sharp as a needle will give us thin lines. These lines can be used as a center lines to represent the center of a circle or a circular object. When sharpening a pencil with a very sharp point will give us very thin lines which are drawn lightly for construction purpose. Pencil is special. Did you notice that? Unlike other drawing materials, Pencil can perform so many tasks. Students, I hope you brought your pencils, sharpeners, and papers too. For this activity, any medium pencil will do. Team up with your classmate and sharpen your pencils according to the earlier illustrations. Then, draw the four types of lines, just like they are drawn on the image given.
Keep practicing such exercises and you will be good at it in no time. A good drafter rarely uses eraser. Selection of a good eraser and using it wisely is a skill by itself. Soft erasers are recommended for removing construction lines and incorrect markings. Even though soft eraser is good for removing pencil markings, the eraser itself should be cleaned often on a clean scrap paper so that it may not leave dirty mark on our working paper. Erasers should be put on a clean place or closed kit so that it is not exposed to dust. Pencil sketching can be done on just about any kind of surface from dinner napkins to sketching pads. For beginners, the most important thing to remember is to use the recommended A4 sized sheet paper. The advantage is not just because of the cost, but because you can work with one sheet at a time. It's a lot harder to learn sketching on a sketchbook if you've never done so. Beside the usual blank paper, gridded papers also used for accurate sketching. Rectangular grid paper is used to guide a two-dimensional sketching like multi-view drawing. Isometric grid paper helps as a guide in making isometric sketching. It consists of parallel lines which are 30 degrees to horizontal. And perspective grid papers have multiple lines which vanishes to a one or two points to guide one point or two point perspective. Students, try to sketch the given multi-view drawing using 0 0.5 gridded or squared paper.
Good. I'm sure you noticed the differences between sketching on a white plain paper and gridded paper. Even though it's hard to find isometric and perspective grid papers, you should get used to drawing them on a plain paper. Try to sketch the following isometric object on your A4 paper. Drawing isometric figure is easier than the perspective one because most of its lines are parallel to each other while the perspective drawing lines vanish to a two or one point. Try to sketch the following perspective drawing.
In today's lesson, you have seen the basic use and materials of sketching. You have started sketching without knowing any techniques. In our next lesson, we will see the techniques of sketching. Students, remember to practice the exercises from your textbook. Teacher, please make sure that students do their checkpoints. Until then, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students. Goodbye.